curious from a quarterback perspective. As you're going through many different training camp, obviously you're seeking perfection on the field as much as you can. But is there a level to this time of year trying to push the limits of your arm, push the limits of your wide receiver, see what you're capable of doing so that when you get to the season, you have a great feel for where to put that ball and windows and coverage, things like that. So just out of curious if you're, you're chasing the best decision every play or trying to test a little bit. Of um, I think there's a little bit of leeway both sides to it. Um, I, I would say that the off season's a lot for testing stuff out and, and different things like that. Um, but, but right now, just being able to, to go through the reads and if, you know, as Freddie talks about it, as I talk about it with uh, Ryan Lindley, the QB coach, is just make sure I'm seeing the right things. And if I am testing stuff out, you just, just kind of let them know beforehand or, you know, so it doesn't look like we're going out there and just playing backyard football. We want to be able to execute and, and really get the ball out and know what we're doing. Hey, Tony. It's good to see you, man. Thank you. Where's yours? I thought you were retiring. <laughs> you set that one up. You really shouldn't have done that. Balls on the ground, drop passes, missed kicks, uh, playing on the flags. Uh, where do you think things stand here? Six, six practice, fourth and ten. Uh, uh, is it progress or is it? Uh, we got to get better each day. You know, I think, you know, what you guys are seeing, there's, there's different things that within the building we need to be able to get on the same page. Uh, you know, situational football is what you guys saw today and we need to stress that. We need to be a smart football team uh, and, and be a step ahead of the game because you, you won't win if you play dumb. Uh, and then just, there's little things we get better at each day, but there's also things we need to work on. That's why it's training camp. You know, we're not at the end of the year, we're not in the playoffs. Uh, we're working on getting better each day and, and that's, that's the, the beauty about training camp is it's not gonna be perfect. You always need to have something to work on. Okay. You found yourself being even more vocal this year. I mean, you know, I hear you don't want to come back to the ball. And what happened with Rashard today, and you know, you're kind of really running the show out there, maybe even more so. Uh, yeah. I mean, it'd be kind of hard for the the backup QB in training camp to be very vocal last year. Uh, so this year is definitely a lot different. What do you think's going on with your former Oklahoma team in particular? What do you mean? That seems like a lot of misses so far. It's practice. You know, he's gonna get it ironed out. That's why he was drafted that high. Uh, you know, he, he's working on it. Baker, you've dealt with expectations. You've been on very big teams at the college level, certainly. All the expectations have been hard knocks. This year, it seems to have ratcheted up, obviously, both with the high expectations and the arrival of Odell. How do you personally deal with balancing all of that? Uh, it's not just the arrival of Odell. It's just the, you know, obviously, he brings his own um, media fame and everything like that, but it's also the talent level that we added with him and all the other defensive players as well. Uh, it's every every guy we brought in here to win. Uh, you you got to raise your expectations within the building. Nothing outside matters. Uh, and just realizing the standard we need to set every day. Um, and that's why we brought in guys like Odell and, and some of the others. Is they know they need to win. They know what, what it takes, and, and we need to stress that. Do you look around the league at all for what some of your peers did in their second year, Patrick Mahomes and Carson Wentz? kind of see how good these guys can be this early in their career? Um, you know, I, I'm worried about doing my stuff, but it's obviously great to see guys like that have success early on. It just kind of, you know, it breaks the mold of, you know, the having the rookie learning process. And those guys, you know, they adapt quickly. So that, that puts the pressure on other guys. But at the same time, I'm still trying to do my own thing. Is any part of you say that's a lot to ask of a guy that's in his second year? Absolutely not. You know, there's a reason why, you know, those guys were drafted that high. I was drafted that high and just, you know, People know what to expect, and also we know what we need to do to, to accomplish the, the results we need. Now that Dorsey's brought in all this talent, chemistry seems to be so big. Do you think that's going to take quite a, a while to get it together, or do you see signs? Um, no, chemistry is definitely the issue now. Uh, definitely, you know, we're getting on the same page, being able to communicate was, you know, what he stressed on very early in the process and now it's being able to execute and like you said chemistry is a big part of it but being able to talk through things and you know get as game like in situations as possible to where we can realize how we need to throw the ball where it needs to be thrown uh, but yeah that's what we're stressing how important is your leadership in building that uh, very important you know I think it's important for uh, for everybody you know to make sure that 
I'm saying the same things and relaying the same messages that Freddie is, that our receiver coach is, and, and we're all we're all saying the same thing. You know, like I say, you got to be on the same page, and so uh, that's what some of these guys need to be hearing is is the same voice of reason. Does it help you to be able to be yourself, like you said last year? When you oh, absolutely. You know, for for those guys to see the same guy every day, uh, they know what's expected. They, they know I'm going to push them. They know I'm going to push myself. Um, so it's it's nothing personal when it comes to you know getting after somebody, and I expect them to hold me accountable as well. And uh, that's the beauty of having guys that really want to win. You know, like chemistry being the team and this kind of a different offense a little bit. Is play time in preseason more important? Um, it's it can go both ways. I, I would say you know as many game like situations you can get are great, but. That's why we do situational stuff here, because you're not going to get those in preseason. You're not going to get like the two-minute drill where you need to score in preseason uh, with everybody that's going to be in there. It's just that's why we're practicing really hard and harping on these guys to play smart football. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see uh, how we handle preseason playing time, but that's not my call. When you yelled the other day at the scramble drill, you afterward talk to the receivers about it, or is it just... Well, yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not a jackass. you got to talk <laughs> through it. I mean, Got it. I'm gonna, gonna harp on it, and then I'm gonna talk to him. I mean, those guys know that that's a big part of our offense, and they know that. It's just the fact that if we get lazy and we let things slide, uh, we need to be over communicating right now. That, that's that's what the good teams do. I mean, like I said, we got to be on the same page. Is there an appreciation from from guys like Odell that, that you're holding them accountable that way? Absolutely, and I think uh, there's an appreciation from my end that you know he's able to come communicate and talk through things, uh, and it's just. Having that open relationship, obviously there's a chain of command, what Freddie says goes, but uh, just being able to talk through things and see it from their perspective or mine uh, is really good. Timing and chemistry coming along between you and It's coming along great, you know, as expected. Uh, once you verbalize what we need to accomplish, then you get out there and you're, uh, I'm able to kind of put it anywhere with them, so it's, it's coming along great. Do you, feel, do you feel this is a more physical thing? Absolutely. You know, we're expected to, you know, when we need to run the ball, run the ball. And the defense, when they need to stop the run, they need to stop it. And that's just what this division's about. You know, I, I know everybody talks about the receivers we brought in and what kind of offense we could be, but we still got the same offensive line and we still got Nick Chubb in that backfield. So uh, we got to be able to run the ball physically, put the tight ends in there, put Orson in there, uh, and be a downhill team when we need to. You know, you know, Freddie, you got to know him last year, obviously. In this role, is there anything that's going to happen early on in this game? About Freddie? Yeah, just the way he's running as a head coach, the way he is out on the field, all that. Uh, like I said, the, the best parts about Freddie are his, how honest he is, his communication, he's himself, and, and he brings that same energy every day. You know, he's the same guy every day, and guys need to see that. And we knew that offensively just because we dealt with him the back half of the year, but then the defense seeing that every day um, is very important. Baker, you talked about um, Antonio Callaway a lot mm -hmm. in many games, and so did Freddie, uh, but we've been seeing him run. What we ask of everybody is consistency. You know that we don't want to be a roller coaster team. You don't want to be up and down. And I'm not saying that Callaway's doing that every day, but just you know we got to be able to have guys that rotate and play different spots. And we're working at him at a couple different spots. And just uh, you know we're expecting a lot out of those guys. And that's that's the great part about it right now. And so uh, Callaway's progressing very nicely. Odell commands so much of the spotlight, and, and Landry has kind of had to take a back seat to the spotlight. He's not taking a back seat. Okay, I was going to ask you about the way he handles Odell having his friend here and also in the team concept. I think that's the thing that's very misunderstood or uh, confused on the outside is you guys make it a bigger deal that Odell's here, but within the building, those two guys are best friends, they're brothers, and uh, they both want to win. So it, it's not about the media, it's about winning. And that's the best part is none of that matters on the outside. They don't give a damn. Are you aware there's a, a mural downtown with uh, a woke up feeling dangerous? I am, I didn't know that. So uh, if you put some, some of the, I don't know, like the 3D glasses on, it says my name on the back. Come on, Jake. Did you know that? Yeah, that's what I was, I was asking you too. Oh, I knew Jake, come on. <laughs> Do you think it's possible that this team will take on some of your moxie? Um, I, I would never ask anybody to change, uh, but to bring the same energy every day, the positive and the winning attitude, uh, that, that's different. But uh, we want guys to be resilient, uh, determined, persistent, and just never quit on it. Um, those are the things that I would ask, and I don't think that I'm the only one that does that whatsoever.
I know you set big that? team goals, right? I mean, everybody's talked about the Super Bowl. But individually, do you set goals? And what's maybe the most important goal? Uh, fewer turnovers, um, putting us in the best position to win more often, which means less negative plays. Definitely less sacks in the first half of the year. I know we kind of ironed that out as the year went on, but uh, just really commanding the offense and putting us in the best spot to win. I mean, more wins, that's individual. That's the best goal I could have. Baker, when it comes out with the top 100 and you're 50, do we even look at that? And when you see it, what do you, what's your reaction? Um, you know, it's, it's quite the honor since we vote on that, the players do. Uh, so that's a, that's a peer thing. It's, it's quite the honor, but that's uh, it's a long way to the top, and we got a long way to win. That's true. As far as the right guard competition is concerned, does that matter to you that there isn't a starting right guard yet, or do you wish the starting five were solidified at this point? Um, I mean, Greg didn't play till whatever week it was last year. So, I mean, we just want to have consistency being on the same page, like I said earlier with the receivers. is same thing up front. Uh, whatever guy is going to be the most physical and get his job done and be the best fit for us up front uh, is going to win that job. And we have a great offensive line coach, and we're, we're grinding right now. So uh, we're trusting that competition to work itself out. With your, uh, relationship, more. With, with your relationships with Drew and, and Gilbert, uh, what kind of asset is that to you in, in the quarterback room and then on the field? Um, it's a phenomenal asset to have that I think goes, you know, one of the more undervalued things within the building, uh, for me at least, and just being able to talk through things and having an open forum when meetings hit. And just, you know, Freddie will come in there. Uh, obviously, his responsibility is a little bit more now, but uh, when he sits down in there, we're still having conversations. And it's just talking through things of how Drew ran it in Arizona and how Freddie taught it there. And then also Garrett's kind of bounced around and been in a bunch of different offenses. So just different things, different pointers, and they – they're able to see things that, you know, me in year two, that it's it's a new thing for me. So that's very beneficial to be able to actually just listen to them and not take it as criticism, but uh, just seeing it, I don't have the experience that they have. What was it like looking up to him, you know, at Lake Travis when he was, you know, superstar recruit and your guy wanted to be, you know, the quarterback at Lake Travis at some point? Um, uh, you know what, it's, I've always looked up to Garrett, and so now it's uh, so surreal to have him on the same team uh, and just, being able to look at him and just who he is. He's the type of guy that you, you want to model your game after. Uh, you want to be the same leader that he is. You know, he, we're different leaders, but he's the leader in his own way. Uh, and just, I've always looked up to him, so it's, it's great having a friend on the team. You seem to be yeah. six with practice. What's the best thing you've seen out there as a quarterback? Just in general? In general, yes. Uh, the competitive nature that we're bringing every day, I, I think is great. I know it's, you know, the, the day off came at a great time just because we went five days in a row, but. Uh, just the, the same energy we bring every day, and guys really wanting to work for it. You seem to be having fun on camera a couple of times with the, the mustache. Is there a story behind? Maybe you'll find out. Maybe you won't. I don't know. <laughs> That's the elegance of having a mustache. You just don't know what's going to happen. No kind of bed or quarterback bonding or anything like that. It's like the QB RV. You guys just don't know. During and any films in the future. You would like that, wouldn't you, Tom? <laughs> Is that it for the day? Cool. Yeah. <laughs>